Hello, internet homosexuals. How are we doing today on this fine, lovely evening where I am sweating quite a lot? You're doing good? Fantastic. Now, today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a vast amount of of emotions. Uh, at this point, I, I have completed the entire video, and I feel like during the entire process of that, I questioned my sexuality around four times, I had a mental breakdown around six times, and around 32 naps. So, uh, all in all, a regular week. But yes, uh, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video, if you subscribed, and you may be wondering, wow, why should I subscribe to another white boy on the internet of a camera and a microphone? Basically, my parents don't love me. That's not true. I bought this microphone with the trust fund money. Oh, no, sorry. I'm not from Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, let's get into today's video. It's going to be different, and I hope you enjoy it. This is my new best friend. <laughs> he loves me. <laughs> now, you know, if there's one thing I love about this platform is when a YouTuber who's basically known for just uploading YouTube videos does something different. When they go outside the box and they create a project, they create something spectacular, which is completely different to their day-to-day -day content. Take Bo Burnham, for example. Recently, Bo Burnham has released a fantastic Netflix special and has been doing specials for the last few years now after he moved on from this whole YouTube shtick. And you know, after watching every single one of these specials, I can at least come to a conclusion that, yeah, there are a couple talented people on this platform, but in my years as a YouTube boffin, I have been witness to a various amount of content on this platform. From great content, to good content, to slightly concerning content, to content that makes me want to throw my guts up. You're laughing at me, aren't you? You laughed! <laughs> on this platform, there is a large amount of... garbage. What the diamonds? And was that a sub-political commentary on every single video that I've uploaded onto this YouTube channel? Yes, my content is pretty sickening. Sickeningly good, am I right? No. Moving on. But yes, me and Bo Burnham aside, and no, I did not just put me and Bo in a category together. I understand, I acknowledge that he has more talent in his left pinky finger than I have in my entire body. We move on to a certain content creator who is renowned for his content in certain, certain ways. And of course, I'm talking about Shane Dawson. Yes, the internet's favourite content creator. Oh, it, it's not 2018? Um, well, uh, I bring you Shane Dawson. Now, pushing controversies and kitty cats aside for a second here, Shane Dawson, in the last few years, has been particularly known for his documentary series that he's been uploading onto YouTube since around 2017. Now, a lot of people in the last few months have been saying, in hindsight, these series were ridiculously boring, they were just Shane basically using people and explaining why these YouTubers are devious supervillains. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Some would consider these to be the most boring, overdrawn pieces of content ever uploaded onto this platform, but I personally would consider them to be art. And, you know, art is subjective. Subjective to a point of where you can now go to the comment section and give me what you think about those series in hindsight. But yes, I want to speak about a specific content that Shane has uploaded onto this platform in the last six years, and that content is Shane Dawson's short films. Now, I am somebody that loves cinema. I am somebody that goes to the cinema every single week to consume any film that I can possibly get in. Recently, I saw a horror film, which I would describe as one of the worst experiences of my life, but, you know, I sat through it. I paid for the expensive popcorn ticket. Popcorn ticket? Cinema ticket. And the expensive popcorn. But the joke is, is that they are both ridiculously overpriced. But, yeah, Yes, I love watching movies, so I'm always willing to put myself through the most pinnacle of garbage in the world, and I understand that sentence did not actually make any structural sense, but yes, I like watching garbage, regardless of it, if it's something spectacular or if it's something truly spectacularly awful, to a point of where it's not even funny. Like, it, it's so bad that why am I watching this? I don't know. Maybe I'm a masochist. So what we're going to be doing today is reviewing every single Shane Dawson short film. Yes, I have put myself through the pain of this. 
But before we go any further, I do just want to say that this video is indeed sponsored. Yes, it is. I got a sponsor today and that sponsor is me. It, it is, it is me, like actually me, not a company called me, not the Nintendo thing which you used to make on your little thing and you've never gone back to them in the past and they're probably li living a lonely life on your Nintendo Wii which is stored in your attic, not that, uh, me. Because I want you to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Because I ask you guys to subscribe and you actually subscribe. And I'm not going to get paid for this video. So all I'm asking you to do is subscribe now. You must subscribe. And if you do subscribe, something magic will happen in three, two, one. You done it? Well done. Now the magic is, is uh, you've subscribed to my YouTube channel and you will get more videos every single week. Congratulations. Now, as far as I know, upon my research, Shane Dawson actually has around six short films, two of which have been seemingly removed from the internet. I may be wrong in saying that, but I couldn't particularly find any more or find these two on Shane's channel. So I kind of believe that Shane has removed them and removed them for good reason. Because some of the content in these films, I... Well, let's just say they haven't aged particularly well. <laughs> like, like seriously, some, some of the things said in these, um, you may be offended, you may be upset, and that's perfectly valid. Because even I was a little bit shocked, and I know Shane's history, but boy oh boy, these, I, they, in, 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 the, in the, the words of the youth, could be considered uh, problematic. As I finished putting on my suit and looked in the mirror, I couldn't help but notice how much I look like a lesbian myself. I beg your pardon? Now most of these short films, as you can see from the thumbnails, are around 10 to 25 minutes long and I'm going to be watching every single one, so I thought we'd start off with the two-part series, I Hate Myself. Because all good things come into the Harry Potter finale, the Star Wars sequels, and Shane Dawson in a fat suit. A wise person once said, prom is only for whores and for the gross men that want to my grandma was a smart lady. <laughs> Lunchtime. The only subject I passed with flying colors. You see that morbidly obese girl with a back sweat and orangutan titties? That was me. I wasn't what you would call popular. Hell. People barely even knew I existed. Yes, uh, this is uh, <coughs> going to be a strange one. Um, and if you want some footage of me actually watching these um, whilst I'm ill and dying, uh, here is that footage. Flashback. Hey, so can I talk to you It was an experience, and I'm not going to comment further on that experience, but what I am going to comment on is my review. So without further ado, what did I actually think about this cinematic masterpiece? You should get popcorn tatted on your back, that way you pop, pop, when I pop the pimples on your back. Now this short film, thankfully, was the shortest one out of the entire series of what we're going to be reviewing today, at a timing of 12 minutes and 48 seconds. Thank the Lord, because if this was any longer, I, I don't think I would have actually managed to get through it, but moving into it, moving into the actual story and plot of this film, it's basically a, a coming-of-age film set in 2006. A, a frightening thought, yes, but in 2006, and it was set apparently during Shane Dawson's high school years. And for an in general plot summary of what's actually happening in this film, basically it's just 12 minutes of Shane Dawson bullying himself, and he eventually just goes to prom. That's, that's literally it, and, and to be honest with you, that does sound like any rom-com film from 2006. And, six. But yes, uh, and when it comes to the bullying himself part, it, it is a little bit concerning. Some of the weight jokes in this short film, I, I don't think they've aged well. And, and this is coming from somebody who was, I'm a fairly big fella. I've recently lost 50 pounds, but I am still a big fella. 
And these jokes caught me off guard. You see that morbidly obese girl with a back sweat and orangutan titties? I didn't know what would hurt more, letting my friend down or going to my senior prom with a lesbian. <sighs> the saddest part is what she said to sweeten the deal. My dad said he'd pay for our meal at Denny's. The even sadder part was my reaction. I'm f***ing in. Before I knew it, it was already time to lie on the floor and have my mom help me zip up my tuxedo pants. Oh, oh, oh God damn it! I'm sorry! The only chance of getting lucky I had tonight was if my suit didn't rip or pop a button. You look so good, like a fat Ryan Seacrest! <laughs> Come on! Then there was a table filled with desserts and a chocolate fountain for dipping. What are you doing over here? Oh, you know, just raising my risk of getting type 2 diabetes. You don't already have that? It's so funny that I have to keep shoving Nutter Butters down my throat to keep the laughs from coming out. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not offended by anything that he was saying. I understand if some people were, but Jesus Christ, in this short film, there seem to be some extreme negative implications about bigger people. And I understand that jokes are jokes, but to be honest with you, it does just seem extremely overdone. You managed to shove 10 fat jokes into a minute short film. I don't know. It, it does just seem like extremely lazy comedy and it also just seems to feed into some negative implications. I think if we can come to some form of conclusion from this is that Shane Dawson is not funny. Like, and I'm not coming from an offense. I'm not offended. Like, trust me, I'm not. It's just more like when you're going to tell an edgy joke, at least make it funny. Like, at least have some comedic value. But that's the thing with this with this film. There is no comedic value. It's just saying, oh, this is a really offensive thing, which is probably going to shock the audience. And, you know, it's 2000 and, I don't know, what, 15, 16? I guess they're going to buy that. When in reality, even back then, it was probably considered extremely cheap and extremely boring. I really don't understand the need for every single short film he makes or every film he makes. It's just an hour and 30 minutes of just pure vulgarity like there's nothing appealing about this there's nothing comedic about this i think even some comedians would just watch this and be like why lunchtime the only subject i passed with flying colors you see that morbidly obese girl with a back sweat and orangutan titties that was me i wasn't what you would call popular hell people barely even knew i existed Oh my god, I'm so sorry I didn't see you there. Oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. No, like, I didn't see you. Like, I wasn't even looking down at my phone or anything. Like, you were right there and I didn't see you. It's like you were invisible. So this movie is narrated by Shane and the person in the starring role is actually called Shane. And it's also based on his book, which is meant to be about, I guess, exaggerated versions of his childhood teenage stories at school. So I guess you could say that this is meant to be some form of retrospective on bullying in high school. But to be honest with you, based on some of the jokes in this, I don't think that can really be said. No, seriously, guys, I heard it tastes like saltwater taffy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can practically smell the bathroom abortions. Now it's covered by the smell of roofie burps. Nice one. You see what I mean? I don't think this is some form of mockumentary critique on bullying in the schoolyard. Bullying in the school place. We need to stop it. Yeah, I don't know why I'm saying like that. We do. We do need to stop bullying. I'm sorry. I, I'm not a bully. I just... I just say bad things about people on the internet, but what I'm saying here is it kind of just seems that this whole thing of, I, I guess, trying to make this like some deep meaningful thing about his past, I, I, I think that it's just more of an excuse to kind of, I guess, say the worst possible things. You look like a child, pro but happy about it. That's what I'm going for. Just sticking all my mouth and force. Maybe one day. Hey, yo, what the f- Yeah, I'm not playing that audio because I don't want to be struck down by YouTube, but you can probably guess what's being said here. And okay, jokes are jokes, but at the end of the day, I, I don't have to find them, like, funny. I can critique them and say, yeah, uh, the 
these are pretty shit jokes. They, these didn't land. They're just overtly offensive things, which I, I, I don't understand why even need to be said, because there isn't any comedic value. But then again, I guess that is basically what all the late 2000s, early 2010 comedic rom-com films were. In that era of time, there were a lot of terrible films that kind of played off that humour. Now, this short film came out in around 2016, as did Shane's film Not Cool, so I kind of feel like this film is a bit of a time capsule from 2009. It's, it just seems that this film is just kind of stuck in that era, but then Shane himself has been stuck in that era into 2021. Like a lot of the high school rom-com films basically were just summarized by a plot conclusion of the person falls in love with the other person and they end up going to prom together. They have a slow dance and oh, we're now a happy couple and the film's over and we made $180 million off some lonely teenagers. And that's basically what this film is. Uh, the, the, the film goes from, you know, Shane is watching some adult videos with his friend and his friend because of that comes out. I guess because of the adult content is what she said. Says. And then after that, they go to prom together. My microphone has just fallen over. One second. So yes, as I was saying before my microphone attacked me, Shane Dawson's friend in this film uh, comes out to Shane because they watch some adult films together and then they go to prom together and there are some strange jokes made by Shane about her friends and then eventually uh, it gets a little bit creepy. Hey, thanks for bringing me. I wouldn't have missed you. In case you can't tell because they're out of their camo shorts and hiking boots, these are all the lesbians at our school clustered into one big tornado of lesbian. Yeah, I can uh, definitely understand why this is no longer on Shane Dawson's channel, uh, despite the second one actually being worse than the first one. But alas, I can understand. But then the rest of this short film is basically just Shane Dawson uh, making jokes about, you know, he, he can't stop eating biscuits and... Okay? You've made that joke like 600 times in, in 12 minutes. You have broken a record at making shitty weight jokes in 12 minutes. How? But then after this, after everything, Shane then tops it off with uh, his teacher coming on to him. Hey, in 10 years time, you're gonna be way cooler than any of these assholes. Seriously, you got something special. Thanks. Uh, Miss Smith? Are you trying to have with me? Yes. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Do you want to dance? I mean, isn't that inappropriate? Like, lifetime movie inappropriate? Come on! You only live once! Let's do this shit! I had never danced before in my life. And honestly, I was okay with her being my first experience. I mean, what's better than slow dancing with your drunk teacher at your senior prom? Nothing. As we finished our first slow dance, the tornado of lesbians came over and dropped off Kelly. I feel like Shane Dawson's teacher could probably sue him at this point because, you know, if Shane Dawson said that I slow danced with him, I would, you know, probably leave society, either that or the lawsuit. But also, I am a... I'm always concerned to why Shane is writing plots like that. I mean, maybe it happened in his life, but... Uh, I don't know. It's just... It's just weird. This whole thing is weird. All of the jokes are concerning. Like, what is this? I'd rather die while mad and be found by my mother. It's like Shane Dawson just like slam dunked a bunch of edgy juice and then just did a load of cocaine. I, I I don't know what he was thinking when he was writing this. And again, people are gonna be like, oh, you're such a snowflake, man. I said he could make these jokes. I, I, I don't personally care, but at the same time, I can critique the jokes. Like he has made these jokes and gone in the way of it and profited off it. That's, he's done that. Nobody is stopping him, you know? He said these things and I'm just kind of like, yeah, they wasn't really funny and it aged really badly. Like, this whole film, there is no plot. Shane Dawson is just making a load of weight jokes, weird comments about lesbians, and his desire to slow dance with his teacher. In terms of some form of critical commentary about this, I mean, I guess the camera work is good? I, I mean, I guess. I mean, when you're a multi-millionaire, you can probably afford some Sony A7s, you know? You can probably afford a good camera. So, yeah, the camera works good. The audio is fine. In terms of an actual film, it's dog shit. It, it stinks worse than my dog's poo. And 
he, when he was a puppy, it didn't smell good. So you know what I'm saying here? It's just not good. In terms of a score of this short film, I would give it a 2 out of 10. I think I laughed like once and uh, that might have been me laughing about the pain I'm in because God, I was in a lot of pain. But nevertheless, uh, no, I didn't enjoy it. And, and no, this was a complete waste of my time and this video probably won't get any views, but I'm doing it for you. So uh, smash that like button and subscribe because Jesus Christ, I'm recording this at like two in the morning. I don't have a life. I'm, re I'm really sad. I can't work out if that was a joke. So yeah, now we have covered the first short film. As I said, I would give it a 2 out of 10. But you know what? You know what, what, what would really concern me? If there was a crowd out there, a group of people that said, Hey Shane, can we have a longer and worse sequel to that film? And you know what? We got it. Hey, here's a riddle for you. How do you get a crowd of 500 people to blow their brains out simultaneously put on a high school musical oh brother this guy stinks here it is people here it is ladies and gentlemen the second short film i mean what a sick sick world we live what sick bastards in 2015 or 2016 thought you know what shane make a second one of that shit what every high school is known for something Football championships, student teacher scandals, school sh and worst of all, the high school musical. Hey, there you are. Uh, uh, what are you doing? Signing us up for the musical. Duh. Can you not read? No, I just. <gasps> Wait, is it your diabetes? And this is the one he kept on his channel. Now, I saw a really good comment about Shane's edgy humor saying that, damn, Shane's edgy humor really used to be how many trash offensive gross jokes can I fit in to make some 14 year olds laugh? And I think that's a, a, a very good summary of this. I think that's all these things are. Shane back then knew that his audience were extremely young and he could make any offensive joke then. Because you know, when you're younger, eh? oh, you hear a little bit, you hear something offensive. And it's like, oh, oh, we shouldn't say that. It's really funny. And then you grow up and you're like, Wow, that was really immature and stupid. It seems that he really didn't grow out of that phase. And you may say, well, Fraser, it was like five years ago. Mate, he was like 40 then. He's like 60 now, but he was 40 then. I don't know how that works. Just pretend we're like in some weird multiversal timeline where time goes quicker. We're in, we are in the, the, the quantum realm. I see this as an absolute win. But now, at this point of the video, I am in like a relative level of pain. Like I've taken a break, I've come back and I've put on some new clothes and I'm actually wearing a t-shirt in a video for once because I'm not feeling that self insecure today. I'm insecure about how I can speak because I clearly cannot speak the English language. But alas, I'm at a relatively decent level of pain. So I thought to myself, Fraser, you can't watch these individually. You need to watch them all at once. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Cause you know when you need to go all in, all in or nothing, that's what I've got to do in this situation. To get through this, I have decided to watch every single remaining short film at once. And this is how it went. I don't want to do this. I, I really don't. And he's here with me to watch it. Shane's on the screen. Hey, hey. Yeah, he doesn't want. Let's just do this. 12 seconds later. Uh, I love that big stupid crap. <laughs> uh, I am like seven minutes into this. I'm seven minutes in. What is this? How is it this bad? What does that even mean? Okay, Drew's in this. Oh, look, you again! Uh, they had Drew it. Look, 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 he was in it for a second. Songs. Come back. He's, he was there, Kenji. He was there. There what? he is, see? The one time I was nice. And that's the highlight of this. The next day. Okay, I've uh, got to the ending. Shane Dawson, you need to go to prison. <laughs> wow. We're starting the horror film because I actually like horror films, so let's go! Ahaha. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> okay, I, f I finished this and I'm 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 now going to watch the other one. Yeah. So I guess they've added like some form of deep 
story to this, but it's not deep. It's just stupid. Uh, how long left? How long left is that? Three days later. Okay, we're, we're done. It's done. It's over. We are done. Kenji, how was the experience? Back to the main video. Yeah. Wasn't exactly one of the funnest experiences of my life, and in fact, I believe the runtime for all of those films put together was around 50 minutes, but it did take me around 3 hours and 30 minutes to watch these short films, mainly because every 10 minutes or so, you know, I had to go throw my guts up. So, we got there in the end, and... Here we go! So in terms of actual plot to the second part of this god-awful saga, it basically is the exact same film, because instead of Shane going to the prom, he is going to, uh, you know, a, a, a musical? Because in these, like, rom-com films, there is either two plot lines. There's either musical, or it's uh, a, a prom. They can't, they can't be anything different. High school students only do two things, and that's sing or dance. That's literally it. Oh, I didn't do either because I didn't have friends in high school. Hey guys! <gasps> Are you guys setting up for the musical? Oh. 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 Ugh, I'm sorry. He's in some kind of diabetic shock all day, I swear. Yes, we're auditioning for the musical. <laughs> Why? Scared? Bitch. No. <laughs> So yeah, uh, Shane has basically, in this uh, second short film thing, which I guess is kind of a sequel, fallen in love with this other uh, theatre musical girl, randomly, spontaneously, for absolutely no reason and no explanation, really. Kind of like any 2009 rom-com film, but, you know, you could probably take that I hate rom-coms. I, 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 I truly detest them, but I've watched nearly every single one. But I detest them, and that is a, a very typical plot. You know, they, they see somebody signing up for something, and oh, I'll sign up for that because that's definitely not stalker creep behaviour and maybe we can fall in love together. I don't have any experience of that. So yeah, this weird guy likes this person, they end up signing up to go to a musical, and they get closer, and the end of it just culminates in uh, this. So nervous in front of that many people. Like... I'm gonna mess up and everybody's gonna laugh at me. Okay, you're talking to the guy who fell down the bleachers at homecoming last year and killed three cheerleaders. What did you say? And killed three cheerleaders. Yeah, I I understand that there, there, there may have been a few chapters uh, missed out at this point. I, I understand that you may be a little bit confused because I've shown you the beginning and I've shown you the end and I've mainly done that to kind of like make you understand that there is no plot development and there is no character development. You just now need to believe that Shane Dawson is a murderer, in calling to this film that he has uploaded onto his channel, and this book that he's released, which is apparently short stories to do with his life as a teenager. So yeah, Shane has practically admitted to uh, committing murder. I don't know if that's one of the worst things he's done, but we can accept it at, at, at this point. But away from the plot for a second, I guess this film is once again meant to be some form of a comedy. And yes, once again, the comedy is making me extremely nauseous. Because once again, it's just weight jokes after weight jokes. And I'm not offended, but it's just weight jokes after weight jokes after weight jokes. And I understand a lot of people will say, well, in the first one, he was just taking jabs at himself. You can't get upset at that. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think there is a negative portrayal of people of a certain weight, but I also do think that it is a little bit strange in this one that the jabs aren't just taken at himself. Remind me why you wanted to hang out again? Oh, how many times are we going to have to go over this? It's because you're fat and you're ugly and you make me look hotter by comparison. Is it her man shoulders? She does have something very prison guard about her build. No. No, I've had a thing for her forever. Aww. You should go ask her out. You have literally nothing to lose. Except, like, a shit ton of weight. Ugh, I love that big, stupid fat And can you wear a looser shirt? I don't need any competition in the boob department. She had beautiful, curly, blonde hair, big, doughy eyes that caught the light perfectly, and a voice bigger than her ass. <laughs> and her ass was pretty big. She's so perfect for a fat girl. Okay, if she's fat, then what am I? Morbidly obese. 525,000. You're fat. You're fat.
something tells me that Shane Dawson likes weight jokes. I'm not sure what tells me that, but uh, there's a little hint on my mind that Shane Dawson occasion that oh right, not so often, but occasionally he might once or twice in the space of twenty seconds make a weight joke. May occasionally, not always. Now, I haven't actually shown every single weight joke in this movie like I did with the previous movie, and that's mainly because of some of the context that I want to show you reflecting on some of the clips in this movie in the future part of this review. But the main criticism I have of this humor is mainly because it's so repetitive. It's every 20 seconds, I swear to God. And if you want to make an edgy film, if you want to make a, a dark humor 18 plus film, go ahead. I don't have to find the jokes funny, but at least give me something different, at least say something actually, I, I, I don't know, just something more entertaining, something which isn't just the same cheap, bland humor. And I personally don't find it funny because it's just so cheap. And I think it really just dampens the movie. In some of Shane's other films, there are other elements of humor, but it seems as time went on, his humor just got worse and worse and worse. And it's truly reflected in these movies. And I'm not saying worse in terms of, oh, it's offensive, I'm offended. And I understand a lot of people most likely will be offended, but personally, I think it's gotten worse based on the factor that he's not funny. It's dog shit. And I'm not saying he ever was funny, but at least in some of these films, in, in the past ones anyway, I can see some form of different comedy. But now going back to the chronological order of the plot for a second here, after Shane and I, I, I guess Amber, according to IMDb, yeah, apparently this has an IMDb page, but according to that, that, uh, the person's called Amber, and they signed up for the musical, and then Shane, you know, casually goes and uh, approaches his love, love interest, Patty. And I, I really like, this is probably my favorite moment of the film, just because of how Shane walks in this. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Wish me luck. <sighs> All right, Jacket, I'm gonna give you a deal. My, my editor's name is Jacket, if you didn't know that. Ja Okay, I want you to take that walk and I want you to do anything with it. I'm not going to see it until the final cut of this video, but I want you to just do absolutely anything you please with that walk from Shane Dawson. Hey, here's a riddle for you. How do you get a crowd of 500 people to blow their brains out? I have absolutely no idea what Jacket has just edited. It could be the most offensive, terrible thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. Please don't do that, Jacket. I, I do want to be traumatized. But it, I imagine it's it's pretty it's pretty spectacular. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. But that walk from Shane is something magnificent and something that should be put into the archives for the rest of humanity. When when you know climate change happens eventually and we all get wiped out by, I don't know, a meteorite of some kind. I, I hope that we send out like a time capsule and in that time capsule is that clip. But yeah, this is the part of the movie where we really start focusing on this romance arc between Paddy and Shane. And now I'm not really sure if this was a, a real romance that actually happened in Shane's life. And I beg and I hope to God that it is not a real thing. There have been a lot of fake things admitted to in, in this book. And I hope this is one of them because... It is just sad. Like, like I'm sorry, it, yeah, that sounds horrible, but it, it, it just is really disappointing. Patty? Yeah? Hey, um, can I ask you something? Sure. Oh, oh. Oh. Are you okay, Shane? Oh. Huh? Right. Uh, well, I gotta go to class. Bye, Shane. I'm sorry, but am I meant to believe that anybody in this film is in their teenage years? These are all clearly grown adults. I mean, half of them look like they're in their mid-20s. Some of them could be argued that they're in their 30s. And I'm pretty sure Shane Dawson's like 52 years of age. I There is no way that I can buy that this is a real teen score. I'm sorry. It, it's just so, so off-putting. Mind you, I'd say if, if, if you hired some teenagers, I guess Shane couldn't put his face over it. And as uh, the hero, as the egotistical superhero who saves the day, because that is inevitably what he does in basically all of these short films. But, you know, you could have just hired some actual 
people of that age, but I'm expected to believe that this is a real high school for the real people. Okay, I, I, I guess. And now don't get me wrong, this isn't just a Shane Dawson issue. This has happened in countless amounts of major blockbuster films. Take a look at Spider-Man, for example. I love that film, but is this a teenager or is this a middle-aged man who has four kids and a divorced wife? You tell me. I think the only time a, a film company's ever got away with it is 21 Jump Street. That's mainly because Shannon Tatum is hot, but also because they play on it in the film. And, you know, we, we can... We can make a pass on that. But you know, maybe I'm just nitpicking. Maybe, maybe this film eventually turns into, I know it doesn't turn into a masterpiece. I don't even know why I'm pretending to say that. It doesn't turn into a masterpiece. It just gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> guy. Patty Stevens, the girl who I loved more than I loved eating slices of pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving like they were pizza. <laughs> she's so perfect for a fat girl. <sighs> okay, if she's fat, then what am I? Morbidly obese. There is no comedy in this film. Uh, this is not entertaining, and if you are laughing at this right now, you are most likely 12 years old. And if you are above the age of 12 and you are laughing at this, please go seek therapy. I'm going to refer to the comment that I was speaking about earlier, and I think this is basically it. Shane Dawson was just basically trying to appeal to a teenage audience by saying the edgiest things possible. Because what I said earlier is, you know, when you're at that age and you say the edgiest things, you're like, oh, that sounds really bad. And then you get to a grown adult age and you're like, yes, that isn't really that funny. And not because I'm offended, it's just not that funny. And look, I know this is going to be a weird comparison between a multi-billion dollar corporation and, and Shane Dawson, but I thought the weight jokes in Avengers Endgame were bad, but this is just another level. I I mean, Hollywood, you can't just put on a fat suit and just make weight jokes and expect it to be funny. It just doesn't work. You see that morbidly obese girl with a back sweat and orangutan titties? No, no, stop it. No, that was me. Can't do that. That wasn't what you would call no. a pocket. No. Hell, people barely even knew. Stop, stop this now. Stop it. Are you done? Like a fat Ryan Seacrest. Right, let's actually continue with the plot of this movie. There is actually some form of, a, I, I, I guess, a villain in this movie when they go to actually do their auditions for the musical and this weird, creepy, nasty guy comes out. Everyone shut up and look at me. <gasps> My name is Mr. O. And I'll be directing this year's high school musical. <laughs> That's when you clap. I said, that's when you clap. Thank you. Thank you. I am better than all of you. Yes, uh, we've introduced another character whose only form of humor written into this story is insulting other characters. Yeah, because we haven't seen that in these movies before. Wow. What a revolutionary take, what a revolutionary character. Sure, this film has its flaws, but at least this character is unique, funny, and quirky. Am I right? <sighs> You're fat. I'm not even gonna comment. I'm, I'm not even gonna say anything, because you know what I'm gonna say? So let's actually focus on the story. So after this, they go and uh, they, do, they do an audition and all of them actually do get into the musical because you know, for the sake of the plot, everybody needs to be in the musical because you know, that's just how it works in these films because they're dog shit. But you know, they get into the musical and let's see what roles they get because in musicals you can, you can play a lot of diverse, interesting characters. So let's see what Shane Dawson played in this musical. <laughs> Oh my god, I got the second lead. Ooh, who do you think got the first? Who the f do you think? I got the part. Ah! <laughs> I know. Okay, let's see what I got. Wow, that's specific. Do you think you're gonna be wearing a fat suit?
if there was a god, he would have stopped this. He would have said, Shane, you've got a million. You got uh, 20 million. Well, you had 20 million before. You, you don't need this. And I'm not going to let you have this. So go to find. I think this actually is evidence that God may not exist. Now, if you do believe in God, no offense to you, no, none at all. But to me, this really makes me struggle to believe because this is like an abomination. This, this, this is like, this is like an Avengers level threat. This movie just should not exist. And I think this movie is a threat to humanity because I think the aliens out there, they will see this movie and they will think we need to stop this. We need to save the universe from these Sorry, I went on a tangent of where I said a lot of nasty words. Um, moving on. Now, at this point of the short film, they are coming towards the conclusion. The point of where they perform the actual musical. But, you know, despite everything, despite all of the certain jokes, Shane randomly just decides to put in a, a message of, of, of goodwill. A message of, uh, you know what? You, you guys are actually, you, you're fine how you are. Because in this film, one of the characters, Paddy, starts to feel self-conscious. And Shane, despite all of the jokes he's made about her, then, I guess, starts to write in a good message. And I know people will say, but it wasn't directly Shane's character saying it. He did write this. And I refuse to believe this is an actual real story. But, you know, here it is. Hey, um, do you want me to ask Wardrobe to help? How bad does it look? It doesn't look bad at all. I got so nervous last night. I ate my brother's entire birthday cake. And now I feel so fat and nothing is fitting. And everybody's out there taking pictures and video. And I'm just going to look like a fat pig. OK, first of all, you're not fat. Just because you ate an entire cake before you came here? Are you kidding me? I had three sheet cakes in the car. Ooh, I can stand next to you in all the cast photos. You'll look anorexic next to me. Now, as somebody who regularly struggles with his appearance and has throughout my entire life struggled with my weight, I can see some level of a deep message there. I can take some actual empathy and understanding, but then Shane just throws in more garbage, throws in more terrible jokes. And I am a little bit confused to why in a short film where it has basically been 15 minutes of weight jokes, are they now trying to make it deep in the last two minutes? I don't really think that works when you've basically been throwing around negative stereotypes and negative connotations towards people of a heavy weight. I really don't think think you can then, after all of those, jo those jokes which you've written for 13 minutes straight, can then kind of backtrack on that and make some weird, deep, personal message. If you're going to make something edgy, if you want to just make a purely edgy comedy, then just do that. Just make it funny. You don't have to make it entirely weight jokes constantly. You could have actually made some edgy jokes, some dark humor and that, I, I, I guess. I don't think it would be funny, but at least you would have tried. But here you've kind of tried to make it some deep and wonderful personal thing. Oh, I'm so deep, I'm Shane Dawson. No, you're not. You've made a bunch of shit jokes for 13 minutes and now you're trying to make this seem like some amazing masterpiece. It's not. It's really bad. Like, this actually makes it worse. This is such a contradiction based on your own writing that I I, 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 I am actually kind of shocked at how the sequel has somehow managed to outdo the original of being terrible. And okay, maybe as a British person, I can't necessarily understand this random happy ending despite this dark humor comedy because I'm a, a negative and cold person like any other British person, I, I, I guess. And maybe I can't understand this American nature, but it, it to me, it's just shit. It, now, if you think this makes sense, comment yes. And if you, if you don't think it makes sense, comment beans because i i don't think it's just me being british i do think this just makes no sense and now after this they of course go and perform and you know shock horror it goes great and that's awesome and that's literally pl the plot shane gets insulted they sign up to some musical to stalk some girl evil man insults them shane turns into a psychologist and they perform and it's happily ever after because shane 
gave her the pep talk, and he's the hero, and that's why there are 25 to 40 year olds as actors in a high school, because Shane had to be the hero and portray himself as the hero and couldn't hire another actor to be the hero. Yeah! Come on. Thanks, Shane. <laughs> like, can somebody give me a hug? Because after this experience, I think I need one. Two out of ten. Boring! But also, I do just want to pull up some random facts for a second here. You guys all know what the Mandela Effect is, right? And you know I've been saying this film was called I Hate Myself, and the first one was- I'm oh, sorry, the second one was I Hate Myself Too. Apparently it's not that. My editor pointed out to me that it's called I Hate My Selfie. Now I don't know if in my mind I've been saying the two, but as far as I remember, I've been saying I hate myself, and I believe the book to be called I Hate Myself, but apparently this entire time, it's been called I Hate My Selfie. So, I don't know if Shane has, like, edited the multiverse, because I did mention the multiverse earlier, but I'm seriously confused and worried that I've slipped into another universe. But, uh, yeah, um, let, let, let's move on from this garbage to, uh, even more garbage. Well, slightly less garbage, alas, but, uh, you know, ultimately, more garbage. 328. A M. You know, on YouTube, you have a lot of thoughts, you know, you think, am I doing the right thing? Am I making the right videos? And here I sit at three in the morning, making a video reviewing a film that came out 10 years ago. I probably should have took the offshore job I was offered in 2015. But I didn't. Can I have that job, please? Now we're back from the coffee break after witnessing my madness at 3am and it's now even later. But basically, this film we're now going to be watching, I wouldn't consider it to be the worst one. In fact, I'd consider it to be probably like the second best film out of the whole bunch we're watching, which really isn't saying much. Like, honestly, it, it's, it's still pretty terrible, but uh, it's not the worst one. Now, this film is called Friends Forever, and as I just said, it is not exactly anything special. And now, this film is actually the first film where the genres start to change, so yeah, maybe we'll get something other than Shane Dawson making weight jokes every 10 minutes. No. Uh, we don't get that. This film is exactly the same as the others, but it's basically just set in a horror setting in 2011. Because yes, this film did come out in 2011, so really you shouldn't be expecting much. Basically, just take the 2015 Shane Dawson and make it a little bit worse. That's basically what this film is. Now it starts off in some random house, and oh no, it's terrifying! It's a house full of posters of Shane Dawson. And yeah, that probably is a very terrifying thing, to go into a random house and you see murals of Shane Dawson everywhere. And a, a normal thinking, normal brained person would most likely be quite uh, terrified, but apparently the main horror element of this is uh, some random bloke is chasing all these people around with a knife. I don't know if you can tell at this point, but I am actually getting a little bit sick of this. Now, you may have seen me review two films, but at this point I have wrote a script, I have watched these films back multiple times, and I am still here. And honestly, uh, we're around the 50 minute point, and I am beginning to lose my patience with these films, because God, God, I need to, I need to like, detox. 
with, with something that is actually worth my time. If you've got any suggestions in the comment section for a good film after this, I would be more than open because I am going crazy. So if you want to suggest some films, just go down below and say what you want me to watch. But yeah, basically the whole plot line of this film is there's a big friendship group and they're in a house and they're being chased by a murderer and you guessed it, one of the people being chased are Shane Dawson. Now, is Shane in this series or a short film a lovely, calm, nice person who he likes to portray himself as in his videos? No, uh, in this, Shane Dawson is basically worse than what he was in any of the other films. In fact, this is probably Shane at his worst in these films. Now, obviously, I know he's wrote this. He's done this on purpose for comedic purposes. But the, the issue is, is uh, when you're going to write something for comedic purposes, as they say, comedic purposes, um, it needs to be funny. Me too. You were faking it. I know. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to go through this entire film and analyse every single weight joke made because you know, you know there's 80 weight jokes every two minutes. You know at this point that this is just a a, a trademark of Shane Dawson. I, I mean, I, I personally don't understand it and I think I've probably said that multiple times but I've done multiple recordings for this and honestly... It, it's just the same insults. I and this these films are about four years apart, by the way, from the one we just watched and this current film. There's like a four or five year gap, but the humor really hasn't changed, except maybe it's uh, a little bit more unfiltered. But yeah, basically, uh, these people they're at a sleepover, and the character who plays Shane is a horrible, nasty person. Oh no! Oh, what are we gonna do? Well, they're getting chased by a murderer apparently, because what big old Mean Shane Dawson did in this uh, short film was he randomly decided to um, I, I guess post somebody's address onto the internet and that person ended up getting murdered and then the murderer ended up going to this house which they're all at having a sleepover at and oh no I wonder who the murderer could be I wonder please don't kill me I'm too pretty to die the other girls totally deserve to die. I mean, Brenda's a bitch, Lisa's a whore, Kiki's useless, Fritz is a bitch, and Lori Beth is probably gonna get type 2 diabetes and die anyways. I mean, right? <laughs> I'm the only one that matters. Danny Dandruff? Wow, I really did not expect that, and this was a very big shock to me. I am very surprised right now, can you not tell her in the tone of my voice that the person that they posted their address on the internet for was actually the person who was trying to murder them? Oh my god, I can't believe it! I'm losing my mind. Now you're probably wondering why am I speed running this film? Well, to be honest with you, there's really not much that actually happens in here. There's a there's a murderer, and he goes around and uh, attacks a bunch of people, and then eventually it comes to some conclusion. It comes to a conclusion which, just like the last one, uh, tries to spin it into some positive note, um, which when I first saw it, I thought, Jesus Christ, even in 2011, you were still doing that shit. Wait a minute, what's going on? I thought you were dead. You also thought Brenda was dead. What? Ah! Hi, Amy. What's going on? We want to teach you a lesson, Amy. Who? Yes! Oh my god. This is just like Fright Night. Huh. Guess that makes me call in Feral. Okay, yeah, this is nothing like Fright Night. Have you figured it out, Amy? Yeah, figured it out, Amy. Have you? No. That's okay. We'll explain it to you later. <laughs> we wanted to teach you a lesson, Amy. We wanted to show you what being mean to people actually does. Now, in fairness to this movie, he doesn't go down the traditional American film route, and uh, actually, Shane's character doesn't change at all. Uh, he, he completely admits, no, I'm not going to change, and you know what? I welcome that. And, and in fact, I'm going to give this film a 3 out of 10 
purely based on that, purely based on it doesn't just go down this uh, route of, oh no, I need to pretend that I'm this deep, meaningful person, that I'm actually this hero. Well, I think this is like kind of before Shane came into his God arc, whereas the previous film was around 2017, 2016. So that's when Shane was really thinking that he was becoming this YouTube God, this, <laughs> this person that could solve everybody's issues with these overdrawn, boring series is. Uh, but this was 2011. Um, this was the era of Shinane, and um, we will get into that. But yeah, there's not really much I can say in terms of a deep dive about this short film. It's a bad slasher film made by a YouTuber in 2011. There's noticeably worse production, worse acting, and that's probably because he didn't have that much money. And that's the thing with his previous films that we've reviewed. Everyone's like, oh, these are really good. These are really... No, they're not. He just pays somebody to direct them and pay to have good cameras. It's not hard to buy a Sony A7, as I said earlier. In fact, it's really easy to have a good looking picture. It's just back then, they didn't have that much money. So, it's noticeably less shit. Wait. More shit. So yeah, 3 out of 10, I guess. I, I feel like I want to be nicer to this because it, it's, it's kind of old, I guess. But you know, it's not as bad as... What, 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 what bad things are Shane Dawson? Cheeto the cat. It's not as bad as the Cheetah of the Cat situation. I don't even know if I'm comparing that to a film. I don't know how I'm doing that, but I'm doing that. <laughs> don't know what's going on. I don't. Um... Moving on. 10 seconds later. Hello, everybody. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, I'm four in the morning. Yep, uh, we're still going. I feel this is why we should have our little mental health check, you know? Uh, I feel like this video has been a bit of a journey. This has definitely been one of my bigger videos. Um, it may not seem like it, but uh, a lot of time has gone into this. A lot of mental, mental funkiness. Usually I'd make a video speaking about what did Jeffree Star do this week? Now I'm speaking about what Shane Dawson did 10 weeks ago, 10 years ago. So, you know, you live and you learn, you have some fun, don't you, on this on this app, uh, you know, you want to learn something, this microphone's not even plugged in. So, uh, yeah, hope you're all doing well, I hope mentally, yeah, you're doing pleased. <laughs> I know it seems like I'm in my Joker arc right now, that's next week, um, not right now, um, but yeah. Back to the studio. Now we are finally on to the fourth out of the fifth films that we are reviewing today. And this is the one which I was genuinely anticipating because I took a peek at the comment section for this film and loads of people were commenting saying that they were crying and how emotional it was. And I, I sat through it and I was like, why are you, are you crying because it's shit? Like, is, is that why you're crying? Because honestly, this film to me, it's so it's basically it's called The Lottery, and it's such a strange film because in sh in short, Shane Dawson made a short film. I, I imagine he had like a million dollar budget for this stuff, where he, he made a short film of losing the lottery. And that, that, that might sound like a, oh, he lost by one number. No, no, he didn't get one number. <laughs> he didn't get, and I'm spoiling the entire thing right now. But I, I'm so mystified that Shane's mother bought a lottery ticket and he decided to make a movie out of it to make it some deep message and, uh, We'll get into it. So yeah, basically the plot of this film is it's a young Shane Dawson as a kid and uh, randomly one day, as I said earlier, his mum decided to wake up and she told everybody in her family that they're going to win the lottery today. No, you're not. I'm not. My dad's not. My nan's not. She's a Jehovah's Witness and I, maybe that will give her some brownie points to get in closer to winning to it, but nope, uh, she's not within it. Uh, the only thing she's winning is... Um, I don't know, knocking on people's doors. I'm gonna get in so much shifts that. Moving on. Now Shane's mum starts to hype up the entire family, knowing that she is apparently going to win the lottery, and she basically promises the whole family a whole bunch of stuff, which even includes this weird scene of where her and young Shane go to this mansion where they're, 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 it's just. That's. Let me just. Let me. Let me just. Let me just show you. My family was pretty broke, so cable was something I only fantasized about. Sometimes I'd also fantasize about having enough money to get a haircut not given to me by my unqualified mom. Mm.
Hold up, hold up. I'm sorry. I, I, I have just noticed this really weird thing, which I, I, I don't know how I've remembered this, but I'm pretty sure that is the Blueberry Girl's mum from Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, the 2005 edition. I've just Googled it, and she's in a lot of stuff. What? She is in Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, but she's in Jumanji, Home Alone 4, Percy Jackson. I mean, Fair play. I mean, I respect Shane for actually getting in, I guess, some form of prestige actor, but at the same time, how do you go from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory to Shane Dawson? Now, I'm not trying to be disrespectful here. I, I, I'm genuinely not. She is an actor. She's earning her money, and I, I, I do completely respect that, but maybe there was something wrong in the career at that <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was so rude. But moving on, yeah. Basically, uh, in this story, they're poor and uh, Shane has a bowl cut. Uh, wonderful. We are going to win the lottery. What? I prayed last night and Jesus came to me in a dream and he told me that we were going to win the lottery and we were going to get everything we ever asked for. It was so real that I think it was a sign. Wow. Do you think you can ask Jesus to make me skinny? Oh, well, honey, he's not a miracle worker. Shane, that's a child actor there is no need to like include that in the script and i i get that the character is meant to be him i i, I understand but is, is there a need like realistically is there a need to even say that why even in a film where it's based around a child actor he is still making these jokes I, I'm beginning to think they're not jokes. I'm beginning to think he just wants to insult people under the rhetoric that it's a joke. Why? Even in a video or a short film about his childhood, he's willing to keep in the shitty, cheap teenage humour. And this even came out just before 2017, which surprises me. Not because of where he was at in his YouTube career at that point, but mainly because he was 28 years old when he wrote this. Grow up! Now, honestly, there's not really much analysis I can do here because the whole thing is just them <laughs> going to the shop and buying a lottery ticket and losing on the lottery like every other person does in the entire world. But, you know, we're going to make it into a movie anyway and we're going to make some deep, meaningful thing out of it. And you'll find out what that is very soon. But alas, yes, uh, here's the clip of them, uh, I, I guess, losing the lottery. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Super Lotto, where the jackpot is $85 million. Good luck everyone. Okay, the first number is 24. Wait, we don't have 24. My mom didn't even hear him. So basically, it, <laughs> it becomes this like really sad dialogue of, oh, oh, she just, she just didn't want to disappoint everybody. The mom didn't want to disappoint everybody. She wanted to buy everybody everything. Yeah. So did my mom. So did my mom. I grew. I, at one point, I was living in a one bedroom flat with my mom and my bro. It was. Uh, we we had to sleep in a separate hotel, which the council provided, which eventually got shut down for reasons which I can't really say because the video will get demonetized. But that happened. So I didn't get mad at my mom for losing on the lottery, and I'm pretty sure she buys the lottery ticket every single week, maybe even two. Mom, you got to stop doing that. It's, you're wasting your money at this point. You probably could have. I don't know, bought a yacht with all the money you spent on the lottery. But alas, it's just a really weird message to send because after this, he's like, well, overall, I wasn't disappointed in my mum because, you know, eventually I grew up to become a millionaire and live in a multi-million dollar mansion in Los Angeles. That's a wonderful message to send out, Shane. You know, you know, all these little kids watching, if you're skin, don't worry, mate. You're going to end up just like me in the future where you become a multi-million dollar influencer where we live in nice, cushy mansions. It's going to happen for all of you. Don't worry. Your parents, if your parents like false promise stuff to you, don't worry. Because one day you'll be like me, Shane Dawson. And if somebody said that to me when I was seven years old currently, I would say, Jesus Christ, can we just move continents? Because... I don't, I don't want any part of that. I guess there was meant to be some deep message here. I mean, according to his comment section, as I mentioned earlier, it was a really sad film where they all cried. And you know, maybe I could get that. <laughs> maybe I could. Maybe I could. But it all culminates in him playing 
a compilation of Shanene. And years later, when YouTube came around, I started posting them there. And more than just my family was seeing my weird creations. It was anybody who wanted to. And over time, for some reason, a lot of people did. How you doing? My name is Shanene. I am a dick. Yep, I am not playing that because I don't want to get demonetized. Now it's time to give your pants a fun catchphrase. Juicy and Lover are so 2009. It is definitely the year. Yep, I am not playing that because I don't want to get demonetized. If those pants don't get there's a problem with you, bitch. Maybe you should trust someone a little more your speed. Like her. That's a guy. I'm only trying to help. He said to his multi-million subscriber platform that, don't worry, guys. <laughs> I wasn't dis disappointed because one time on the internet, I decided to upload a video of me saying a bunch of terrible things every single week, and that led to me getting millions of dollars. What what a message! What a what a deep, inspiring. I'm truly in tears. <laughs> what? Like, if the Shanene bit wasn't in this, um, no, it would still be terrible. But I mean, it just, it just makes it even worse. Like, I'm not laughing at Shanene. Don't get me wrong. I'm laughing at how just out of field this is. Like. Where did that come from? <laughs> but you know, it gets even weirder when the final act of this is basically Shane showing his mum a house he's bought her and it's Shane as an adult. But what makes it strange is that it's not Shane's actual biological mum he's showing the house in this. Because that would make more sense. It would show, you know, the the age up. No, no offense, obviously, just people do age. And it would be Shane aging up as well. But, but no, <laughs> it's that act. Actress. It's not the biological mum, and it's like this, I guess, really weird reaction considering it's meant to be, I guess, a real betrayal. You're gonna be fine. Okay. And that's not for your YouTube because I didn't do my hair. No, it's okay. fine. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. No. <laughs> okay, here we go. I mean, sure, it's great, but it's it's not Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Yeah, honestly, uh, this one was just really boring to me. I mean, yeah, they lost the lottery and he tried to put a deep spin on it. And then, and honestly, lads, I've got better things to be doing than watching that. I, I think there, there are far better things I could be doing in the world with my time. I mean, not really much. It's like four in the morning running. But, you know, there are better things I could be doing. Um, yeah, I, it's, this is a terrible film. Uh, uh, 0 0.5 out of 10. I... I just don't get why he tried to put a deep spin on this. Um, yeah. Uh, moving on. Later. It is now five in the morning and um, the sun's coming up. You can't really see it there, but uh, in the other direction, it's coming up. So, um, <laughs> I, why am I doing this? You're probably thinking I'm losing my mind right now and uh, you'd be correct. Back to actually before we go anywhere. Gay pride. Among us pride. Sussy pride. And uh <sighs> let's get through it. Now, this is probably gonna be the shortest review. Uh despite there being a fairly long amount of time on this short film. Basically, this is just a short film, which is another slasher of where, once again, Shane Dawson is insulting people, but this time he's actually playing Shane Dawson, and the people he's insulting are, uh, I guess, his friends and uh, Joey Graceffa. So it's a 21-minute short film called It Gets Worse, and that's quite ironic because that's basically every single film I've been reviewing today. It just gets worse and worse and worse. Quite like my mental state. But this is the introduction. Hashtag team internet, am I right? <laughs> oh, dearest friends, YouTube colleagues who I make out with for views, thank you so much for coming to the release party for my new book, It Gets Worse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've struggled. I've had hard times. The last few years, oh, I've had my fair share of controversies. You do one blackface video once a week for four years and now you're a racist. Um, I'm not really sure what to say. It's not really my place to say anything here, but 
I'm just going to allow you guys to kind of consume what he just said and we're just going to take it in and, and, and move on and you can make your own judgments for yourself. That's the introduction. I'm not like trying to set anybody up here. That, that's literally the introduction. That's his introductory speech in, in, in this. Now that terrible statement aside, the plot to this movie is basically Shane Dawson just uh, promoting his book. Yes, it's another film of where he's saying, hey guys, buy my book. It's shit and it's just like the other ones. And uh, yeah, it's another slasher film where Shane is a nasty person, I guess, and they're randomly getting hunted down. So yeah, um, that's going to be uh, really fun. Uh, I think for me, the best moment of this film was when Joey Crosetta gets killed when he's on the toilet. Guys? Hello? I mean, if there's one way to go in this world, I guess it is on Shane Dawson's toilet. I can't really think of any other ways. Now, just like any other slasher film, it does just get pretty repetitive. And I'm not exactly going to criticize that or be mad at that. That's just the genre. That's how it works. It's just the same thing of people being hunted down. But in this one, unlike the 2011 one, the camera work and acting is actually pretty decent. And you'd think so, considering the amount of books he's promoted to us between this time period. If you didn't buy some Sony A7s at that point, when are you going to buy them? Never. I don't know why I said it like that. I just phrase it, calm down. <laughs> But, alas, yes. Uh, there are actually some funny moments in... Well, there's, like, one. Um, it, 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 and it comes from Drew. Uh, this is the, the moment. I don't know, Drew. Maybe it was a ghost. That's not funny, because I'm actually really scared of ghosts. Was there anything that you're not really scared of? Viners. We have such sad sad lives is he is he is he wrong I, what are viners actually up to i swear to god half of them either just like decided to i don't know move away to some faraway island on another planet in another universe and the other ones just kind of ended up in jail so uh yeah uh i don't know what the viner crew are doing now other than that but yeah He's not wrong. So the starting plot of this is Shane Dawson basically just being a dick. And the mid plot of this is them being hunted down. But I think that we should actually move on to the final act of this. Because at this point, everybody other than Shane seems to have been completely taken out. And it, it does seem to be that the person going around murdering everybody is actually an ex-fan of Shane Dawson. So yeah, I guess it's Onision. I want the old Shane back. Delivery girl? So like nobody has ever said, uh, she wanted the old Shane Dawson back. And I think that is one of the most controversial statements ever made. But, you know, the old Shane does come back. He certainly does. Uh, there is this big dramatic, I guess, sequence of where Shane just... Shane just starts putting on his outfit to become Shanae I'm not joking, there is like this two minute sequence of dramatic emotional music of where he becomes Shanae. Am I going to get in trouble for saying that? Look, man, I, I I don't even know what I'm doing at this point. I don't know why I'm reviewing this. I don't know what you've sat through. If you've sat through this, congratulations. You're as ill as me. But that's that's like the conclusion. He dresses up as Shanae. He makes a bunch of videos as Shanae. I, I, why? 
And this came out bef just before 2017. Like, bro. Oh, oh God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ. I, why am I here? Like, not just on YouTube, but just in general. But basically, the first two films, they were like mini budget films, like his big blockbuster thing, which also failed. But these, these are just weird. One of them is a murderer that wants them to be Shanene, and the other one is just somebody that wants Shane to stop making weight jokes. And that's not to get mistaken as me, because I don't know what was with that in all of these films, but it never stopped. I've just started to cut them out because I just really couldn't be bothered to reference them at this point. And yeah, the other short film was a 16 minute video about how Shane Dawson didn't win the lottery. Wow, what an exciting experience this has been. And now ultimately this whole thing has basically just been Shane Dawson promoting this book and uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong in that. But at the same time, I'm not in a contract to say that's kind of boring, Shane. Like Jesus Christ, is the only thing you got a lottery ticket story. Like, I, I'm not even making jokes. I'm actually kind of angry that I've, I've done this at this point. But uh, yeah, I'm not really going to show the rest of this film because there's not really much to be honest with you. It's just to do with the, the Shanane. I'm not even going to say it. it. But yeah, as you can imagine, it's him wearing that outfit and doing those old jokes that he did. And this film is a 0 0.5 out of 10. What even is the point? What, like, genuinely... That's the end of the video. Uh, no, it's not. But basically, to conclude this, Shane Dawson, these short films, you need to remove all of them from the internet. I understand that you've tried to bury a few of them under the carpet, but I would just prefer it if you buried all of them under the carpet and then just gave me a big load of money. No particular reason for the money. I just really like money. So if you want to like, if you want my bank details, just send me an email and we can do that. And uh, yeah. Overall, this was an absolutely terrible experience. I don't know why I did this, and I don't even imagine this is going to get many views. I'd appreciate it if you shared it. But yeah, um, overall, like a 1 out of 10 on a conclusive scale for all of them. Uh, please never step into filmmaking again. In fact, I feel like that 2014 to 2016 era of YouTube filmmaking has now ended and we've moved on to a new chapter. A wonderful new chapter where every single TikToker thinks they're a musician. And on that note, see you later. Hello. It's not over, not quite. I thought we'd do this uh, kind of conclusive, uh, sort of opinionated thing without a script at the ending of this long video. Uh, I'd like to say that in terms of like creativity and stuff, I don't actually have an issue with YouTubers making these films and uh, making music. Same goes for any influencer or anybody in general that wants to make something. One second, let me just, let me make it a bit lighter. Um, I went for the old special lights, but yeah, I don't necessarily have an issue with influencers making creative art and creative pieces. I just think that in some cases, a lot of cases, they do it as some form of cash grab, and I think that's very frustrating. And maybe Shane definitely did have some form of desire to make film but that doesn't necessarily mean that i can't criticize it but at the same time i think when it comes to a lot of influencers out there books music films have been created purely just to make money and it is a little bit disheartening and a little bit disappointing and it also limits the amount of opportunities to actual creatives that want to make these things now i'm not saying that i am one of these creatives but i'm sure that there are creatives out there that could produce something absolutely amazing but these I guess studios are going to these influencers because they know they'll bring in the most numbers and the most money on a short-term perspective. But if we actually started focusing on real creatives who want to make something out of pure passion and something amazing and brilliant, and not necessarily just film, but something incredible in their own sort of field, such as maybe even a book, maybe it will be an album, maybe it will just be a tiny little 10 minute short film. Who knows? I just think that a lot of these creators have saturated the, the market so much that it has really limited an amount of like, Sorry, it's limited the amount of opportunities for real striving creatives. Again, not me. <laughs> I would love to write a book one day, and I think I will eventually have the ability to. Uh, it's one of my passions, literature. 
But ultimately, when it comes to filmmaking, I also like criticizing films, and these films are absolutely awful. But thank you for coming on this journey. If you would like to follow my Twitter account, if you would like to follow my Instagram, it's all in the description. It's iNever69 on Twitter and iNever on Instagram. Thank you so much for coming along to this video. I really appreciate you being here. And now I'm going to turn off my lights in a very dramatic way. Hold on a second. Let me do this. Okay, everybody. I will see you in the next video. That didn't work. That didn't work. That didn't work. That didn't work. I'll see you in the next video. There we go.